In the news this week, both federal and state budget have been released. We have a special report tonight. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Daniel Staniskov. Good evening. It's been a big week worth of news and yes, it's about the money. The state government has released its annual budget showing a grim picture of cuts and rising debt for Western Australia. Helene Fong has this special report. With the budget books in the red, Treasurer Mike Nahan was facing the worst set of numbers this financial year. The iron ore and GST revenue impacts combined with the shift underway in the economy from the construction to the export phase are unprecedented and have significantly impacted the confidence and income of West Australian businesses and households. This year, the government is in a blowout of $2.7 billion, and net debt is projected at $31 billion by end of June 2016. The budget is expected to only return to the black by 2017-18. The main cuts will be from removing the $3,000 first homeowners grant for established homes, Voluntary separation schemes will also reduce 3,750 headcounts from the public sector. State assets like Fremantle Port are also up for sale. Significant spending increases include a $24.1 billion infrastructure program to create jobs over the next four years, $8.1 billion for health, $4.8 billion for education, and $1.4 billion will be spent on police services. A new no-fault catastrophic injury compulsory third-party insurance scheme will be introduced from 1st July 2016. Vehicle owners will have to fork out an extra $99 above the existing premium. For the first time, West Australians who are catastrophically injured through no fault of their own will have access to lifelong caring support. Meanwhile, families also have to face a broad increase on the cost of living. This is the worst budget in West Australian history. Colin Barnett has blown the books and is making you and your family pay for it. Helene Fong, WAMN News. Meanwhile, Australian Treasurer Joe Hockey has delivered his second federal budget. Small businesses will be given a boost with tax cuts, while some families will lose childcare subsidies. Darren McElain summarises the winners and the losers. It's federal budget week in Canberra, with Joe Hockey outlining his second budget as Federal Treasurer. So today we have taken steps to continue repairing the budget with sensible savings and with a prudent approach to spending. The biggest winner, small businesses, which will receive generous tax breaks, including unlimited tax deductions for items under $20,000. Working parents earning between $65,000 and $170,000 will be about $30 a week better off. Sweeping changes to the pharmaceutical benefits scheme will see the government pay generic drug makers less for some brands of medicines. Struggling farmers will receive $300 million in drought assistance. Stay-at-home parents who aren't working, studying or in training will lose out on childcare subsidies if their household earns more than $65,000. 80,000 expectant mothers will no longer receive government's paid parental leave benefits if they already get entitlement from their employers. These mothers will be nearly $12,000 worse off. About 91,000 people will lose their pension payments. More public servant jobs are expected to be slashed due to downsizing. Unemployment currently stands at 6.2%. Foreign aid will be cut by $4 billion over the next three years. The government insists this budget is designed to grow the economy but critics claimed it's on a path to surplus by the voting booth. The 2015 budget has neither the qualities nor the priorities of the Australian people. Darren McElane, WAMN News. And news commentator Howard Sattler joins us now. Howard, the cuts from federal and state budget will affect a lot of families, but is it necessary? Well, the, the Barnett government, you're talking about the state budget, is between a rock and a hard place here. They're being screwed over by the robber states like Tasmania and uh, also the Northern Territory, larger states they call them, South Australia, and Victoria gives money away like there's no tomorrow to for projects that don't even happen, so they're using our money to do that. So we have little or no choice but to try and try and get money somewhere from places which we haven't been able to before. They made a few mistakes along the way. Howard Sattler, thanks for sharing your view with us. Pleasure. 
And we continue with more local news. St. Vincent is preparing for the annual CEO sleepout event coming in June. Last year, many executives and prominent Perth business people participated by sleeping out in the cold at the Wacker Ground. The money donated by participants will benefit homeless people in Western Australia. And there are about 10,000 homeless in WA at the moment and about 25% of that are under the age of 18. And the homelessness is caused for a whole range of different reasons, but it's not the old man with a bottle in his hand is the typical. It's actually families and young people and actually 34% of those who are homeless are actually leaving a, a, a family breakdown or domestic violence situation. A protest was held in Forest Place to remember Al Nakba, the day when some Palestinians were kicked out from their homes by Israelis in 1948. Demonstrators claim that hundreds of villages have been destroyed during the raid. They also demanded that Israelis stop bombarding Gaza. The spirit is very strong, and um, the rally in Perth today is just part of an international picture. Uh, at this time, over this weekend, there will be protests around the world by Palestinians and their supporters uh, to commemorate the event known as Al Nakba or the catastrophe. A federal judge has sentenced Jokar Sarnayev to death for his role in last year's Boston Marathon bombing. The 21-year-old was convicted on all 30 charges against him. Sarnayev showed no emotion in the courtroom as the verdict was read. It is not known exactly where Sarnayev will end up on death row. China has expressed serious concerns after senior officials from the U.S. Defense Department said Washington plans to station B-1 bombers in Australia. The plan is part of the U.S. government move to ensure freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. At the same time, the Indian Prime Minister is visiting China as both countries try to mend their relations and increase economic cooperations. And those are the top stories this week. We have more news on our website. We'll be back next week. In the meantime, look after yourselves. Good night. Good night.